do I belong here? This is a question that I have asked myself many times in many different situations. From nightclubs in Paris to back alley bars in New York City. From backstage at Fashion Week to the Situation Room in the White House. Over the last couple decades, I have served as an American diplomat, I've been a DJ, and I've even been a photographer. In pursuing each of these passions, I have found great excitement, I have been fulfilled, but I also have been put in the most destabilizing, disruptive moments that I have lived. I've been taken out of my comfort zone. And at each turn, I had to ask myself the same question. Do I belong here? Do I have the skills to succeed? And what am I doing here anyway? Well, here is a small snapshot as to how I answered that question. And in doing so, let these passions impact each other for often unexpected and actually serendipitous results. So how did I embark on this path in the first place? I'm Chinese American. I was raised by a single mother. Very humble beginnings. But I had the great opportunity to attend Georgetown University in Washington, DC, where I studied international diplomacy and Spanish and found that my first diplomatic posting would be in El Salvador, a country in Central America I had visited in the 1980s. So there I am, a young American diplomat, full of vim and vigor, eager to start the job, which at the time was interviewing applicants interested in traveling to the United States, a very common job for many young officers. So I was there each day interviewing visa applicants in Spanish, and every once in a while, I would be interrupted and in Spanish, politely asked, well, may I speak with the American officer, please? Or, thank you, but is there an American I could speak with? Now, of course, this at first surprised me. I was a little taken aback, but I understood. This was not the face of America that they were expecting. And they were, in essence, asking me do you belong here? And actually, I was able to answer that question inside because I knew I was proud to be a face of America just as much as my colleagues next to me. Fast forward about 10 years, and I had the great honor of serving in the White House. President Obama was preparing for his first trip to Asia. I had prepared the materials for his interview with the largest television network in Japan. And as a result, I was asked to join the briefing in the Oval Office, my first time. Needless to say, I was a little nervous. But I dutifully followed everyone into the Oval Office for the briefing, folks that had been around the president much longer than I had, and a sort of game of musical chairs started. And when the music stopped, I was the only one left standing. Lo and behold, there was a seat at the end of the couch, at the very end of the couch. I thought this was perfect because it's the farthest away from the president sitting behind his desk. He won't see me shaking. So I sat down, and lo and behold, the president stood up, and he took his favorite seat in front of the fireplace, right next to where I was sitting. Now, I'm smiling in this photograph but I'm turning multiple shades of red. I'm thinking to myself, just look down, only speak when spoken to, and this will go just fine. And the briefing proceeds. At the end of it, there is one issue that hasn't been covered. So I bring up the topic, and the president provides his hypothetical answer very crisply, very concisely, and at the end of this, sort of leans back, turns to all of us, and says, well, as the song goes, what more can I say? I immediately almost burst out laughing. I had to cover my mouth to cover my smile. And he saw that. He saw that I recognized that as a song off of Jay-Z's The Black Album from 2003. Okay? 
So afterwards, standing near his desk, speaking with a few colleagues, he comes over and simply puts his hand on my shoulder, turns to me and says, I bet you've never heard the president quote Jay-Z before, have you? I said, no, Mr. President, I certainly have not. And I was now able to have a big grin. And for that moment, that brief moment, I did feel like perhaps I do belong just a little bit here. A couple years later, still an American diplomat, I had the chance to support Susan Rice, who was our ambassador at the time to the United Nations, as she traveled to Libya in November of 2011. I went as the press officer and also as the unofficial photographer. We went to Tripoli for a series of government meetings and then on to Benghazi. And in Benghazi, the ambassador wanted to walk the streets. She wanted to go to Freedom Square where the revolution had been kept alive. As we walked down these streets, the energy in the street was palpable. The crowds grew and grew. People were waving American flags, had handwritten signs welcoming her, and the throngs began to tighten around us, so much that our security team decided to sort of circle the wagons around us, in essence asking the question, do we really belong here? We proceeded, and we stopped at the media center where the ambassador had her next meetings. And as the crowds began to surge and our backs were pressed up against the gates of this media center, I turned towards the street and I saw an image. I saw an image that to me captured the moment, captured the energy and exuberance, the atmosphere on the street at that time. So I picked up my camera and shot one frame, this photograph. We did not have internet service or phone service while on the ground. So we had to wait until we were on the airplane and at 10,000 feet had internet. I emailed the photograph back to the offices in New York and I put it up on Twitter. Well, this image became one of the defining images of this visit. Again, capturing the spirit that we experienced, what we witnessed, and the message being sent back to us about our support for Libya. Now, why did I have the camera on me in the first place? Why was I the unofficial photographer? Actually, the answer to that goes back to my DJing. I had always had a love of photography. When I was in high school, I was in the dark room helping publish the newspaper, but that love had died down. When I was in Paris and I had started DJing, I discovered something called Fashion Week. And while I was DJing Fashion Week events, I then started attending shows. Somehow I ended up backstage, and I began to develop my skills as a photographer backstage. I rediscovered my love of photography through Fashion Week. Well, very fleetingly, you saw an image there. The pretty one in the far corner was me. So I will tell you, though, the first time I was backstage at Fashion Week, the mayhem of models and celebrities stylists and paparazzi, air kisses and hairspray. I did not feel I belonged at all. But I pushed ahead, and it was the skills I developed in this environment that gave me the skills I could then apply almost anywhere else, including the streets of Benghazi. So my diplomatic career helped me discover DJing, helped me rediscover my love of photography. Now, we all have our interests, our hobbies, and our passions. For the longest time, I tried to keep mine apart. I tried to keep them separate, having to prove myself in each one. I realized that at the root of all these pursuits was the desire to speak another language, to become fluent in the language of diplomacy, the language of music, or the language of art. Our interests, our passions may seem very unrelated, very distinct, but together they are what give life to our personality. They are what build our character. They are what inform our worldview. They motivate us, 
they teach us, they inspire us. Becoming the fullest version of yourself means drawing on all of those passions. It is this perspective, it is this idea that has informed my views of success and leadership. Know your strengths. Understand the roots of your passions. Don't hide them from each other. Let them impact each other. Let them lead you to very unexpected places. And for those around you, foster the same pursuit. Encourage this among your peers and encourage it in those whom you mentor. And in doing so, as a result, you will become a better leader. I am now in the private sector, an opportunity to learn a new language. While I still have one foot in foreign policy and one hand still on the DJ turntable, I am now having to ask that old question again. Do I belong here? When I first stood behind two turntables at a CD bar in Paris, did I feel I belong there? Mais non. When I first stood backstage peeking behind the curtain of Fashion Week with all the hairspray and the mayhem, did I belong there? I didn't think so. And when I was a young American diplomat serving his country for the first time overseas. Did I feel I belonged there? No. But am I happy that I've pursued each of these passions to their fullest? And am I happy that I let them overlap, that I let them impact each other? Not necessarily knowing what the results would be of that cross-fertilization, very much so. Now, I think at this point, you can probably guess how I'm going to end my talk. Perhaps as the president said, and as Jay-Z wrote, as the song goes, what more can I or we say? Thank you very much.